Hey there, crew. Geology professor Sean Wilsey here reporting on some interesting earthquake activity in northeastern California. Nothing alarming, nothing large in terms of magnitude, but just had some interesting information just wanted to share with you here. And it's in an area of California that we don't probably typically think of when we think about California earthquakes. In fact, when you look at the map here with the last 30 days or so, you can see, you know, the, the typical pattern of quakes on and close to the San Andreas Fault here. But the area in question here actually lies in northeastern California, uh, north of Lake Tahoe, just near the town of Susanville. So you can see this cluster of earthquakes here that's occurred. Um, we have a 4.7 that occurred on December 28th, and then a 4.9 that occurred on December 30th. Again, these quakes were you know, not dangerous. They did not cause any injuries or significant damage that's been reported. Uh, but it's felt by locals, and it's an interesting pattern. And so I thought we'd dig into this a little bit. The quakes in question were pretty shallow. They were anywhere from you know, five to seven kilometers or three to four and a half or so miles. Uh, getting here a little bit closer, you can see the location of that 4.7 right here with the blue dot. And then coming over here to the other blue dot, the 4.9, and then the cluster of quakes here. So probably not enough to be a swarm. I'd call it more of like a a series, I guess, of quakes, but you've got maybe a dozen or so locations there for this earthquake series. But it's one that could go on for a couple more days. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, and again, it lies in this interesting area of California, kind of outside what you'd normally would think of in terms of California's typical quakes. Let's look at some of the data. We'll focus on this 4.9 here. Uh, we looked at the, the map already. Um, of course, we love looking at the beach balls because that tells us a little bit about the, the mechanics of the fault and exactly how the ground uh, moved and broke across that fault during the earthquake. And so you can see that this is mostly a strike slip fault. So with a probably a northwest southeast uh, striking fault plane that seems to match also pretty nicely the distribution here in a northwest southeast direction. The alternative fault plane would be sort of a southwest northeast trend there. And mostly, again, strike slip, but a little bit normal motion as well. So a little bit of up and down motion combined with that uh, side to side, or in this case, right lateral motion from this quake. So we're expecting, you know, a lot of aftershocks. USGS uh, models have, you know, a 57% chance of at least a three magnitude three aftershock in the next week or so. Again, small, pretty mild earthquake when it comes to uh, size and in terms of damage and stuff, but big enough for people to feel. Looks like on the Did You Feel It report, we've got 1,200 or so responses. Um, you know, pretty pretty light shaking overall, but enough to get your attention for sure. So more interestingly, I thought this would be a nice point to look at exactly what the faulting looks like here. So when we look at the state uh, map for faults in California, and we look at this area. So here's Susanville right here, kind of at the juncture of these two faults here. And then we look at where the earthquakes actually occurred today. So this little cluster of quakes here, you can see is just a bit southeast of Eagle Lake, which is this lake right here. If we kind of compare that to this map here, looks like it's probably this fault here um, that might've been the culprit. And you can see again, that Northwest Southeast trend for this fault here. When we click on that one, um, you know, it's, you know, a fault, but they don't, it looks like there's not a lot of information on it. Some of these other ones have a little bit more uh, information and have been mapped out before, but there's a series of faults that follow this orientation that run through this area. And looking at this in a big, a little bit bigger context, this whole area is part of an, a region known as the Walker Lane. So kind of looking at it from the big picture view, we have the San Andreas Fault here running through California. That, of course, is the plate boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. Uh, then as we head out into Nevada and into Utah, we're in the Basin and Range, which is mainly characterized by approximately east-west extension. And that's why you get all these uh, mountains and valleys running through Nevada and into western Utah. But just on the east side of the Sierras is the Walker Lane, and it runs from the Garlock Fault here in the Mojave uh, all the way up along the east side of the Sierras, uh, right past Lake Tahoe, and then up to the Modoc Plateau here. So it almost spans, um, I think, about something like 500 miles, 800 kilometers, something like that. And so the quakes we saw 
occurring the last few days or in what's known as the Northern Walker Lane. And so this is an interesting area because even though the San Andreas Fault is the plate boundary, it doesn't take all of the plate motion. It actually uh, it takes a, you know the majority in terms of a percentage of the plate motion uh, is accommodated here or on its uh, secondary faults. But the Walker Lane actually takes about 15 to 25 percent of the total plate motion. And so there's some research and thoughts that this might be uh, a developing transform plate bind boundary that basically over time, the San Andreas fault might become less active and the seismicity and the movement <clears throat> along the Walker Lane east of the Sierras could start to take over. Imagine just sort of transferring the, the plate motion from the San Andreas over here to the Walker Lane. So it could be possibly uh, a developing plate boundary, which is pretty neat. It has, of course, you know, with the plate motion here, it has both, you know, right lateral faults as well as normal faults. And the, the one we, that we looked at that occurred just in the last day or so was a bit of a combination of those there. Um, and so you can kind of zoom out a bit here, looking at the state map. Here's Lake Tahoe here. And as we come up into this northern part of the Walker Lane, you can see the, the trend of those faults here. Uh, again, a little bit different orientation than the San Andreas Fault, which comes onto view just down here, San Francisco. Uh, so interesting nonetheless. So I thought I'd just share a little bit about this little series of earthquakes. Maybe you felt those. If you want to share your experiences in the comments, that would be great. Um, but just thought I would share a little bit about this interesting area where we've had Seismicity, we've seen earthquakes here in the past, so this is nothing new or novel necessarily, but it's a little bit um, different than what you typically think of and see when it comes to California earthquakes. So uh, I'll be sure to share any more information if I get it, and thank you for your support of the channel, and we'll see you next time. Take